How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can save callers to a database in SwiftUI and I actually had to do quite a bit of research myself to get to this conclusion. So let me show you what it's going to look like. For example, we're going to have a caller picker and you can pick literally any color you want. It can be blue, it can be some sort of dirty green or it can even just be this red over here. You can click on it and then all you have to do is implement some sort of save function such as this button over here and it's going to save the caller. Now, if we go ahead and close this application, just like that, and open the storing callers, it's going to persist, it's going to still be there. And we can change it to another caller, such as blue, close this, click on save caller, and wait a few seconds so it actually saves, close the application, and when we open the application, it's going to remain blue. So let's go ahead and get started immediately in our fresh SwiftUI project. And the first thing we want to do is create a struct, which is going to be called caller data. And the first thing we need to refer to is a private var caller key, because we're going to be using the user defaults for this. So we need a common key. And this is going to be the caller key, and this should be an equal sign. Then private let user defaults equal user defaults dot standard to get the standard library for user defaults. Now the first function we have to create is the save caller function. And it's going to take a caller of type caller. So it's easy to implement. And then we need to let the caller equal a UI caller. We need to actually pass it as a UI caller. And inside here, we need to pass the original caller. And we want to get the CG caller. So now that we have it into an older version of the caller, we can go ahead and say if let components equal caller dot components. So if there are these caller components, then it's going to give us an array of RGB, which means we're going to get numbers for red, numbers for green and numbers for blue. So it's going to come back as an array and we're going to want to save that array. So go ahead and type in user defaults dot set. And inside we're going to insert the components for the key of caller key. And here, I would just go ahead and print callers saved, or it's actually just one caller, so caller saved. And that's all you have to do to save the caller into user defaults. And if you're unsure what the components are, just go ahead and print them. And actually I'll print them for the purposes of this video. So if we go ahead and type in components, you will later get to see what the components are. It's just going to be an array of RGB values. Then after that, we want to go ahead and type in function load caller because we need to load the caller each time we run the application and it's going to return to us a caller when we load it. So for this, we need to go ahead and get the RGB array. So we're going to type in guard let array equal user defaults dot object for key and it's the caller key. And we're going to type in as question mark because this might return nil if there's nothing there as a CG float. And if this goes wrong for whatever reason, we're going to go ahead and return caller.black. So that's going to be the default caller. If there's no caller that can be loaded. Now, if all of this goes good, then we can go to the next line, which is let caller equal caller. And it's going to be of dot sRGB. And inside here, first we need to refer to red, which is going to be a double and the first value is going to be at the index of zero in our array. Then we're going to have a value of green, which will be at the index of one, a value of blue, which will be at the index of two, and a value of the opacity, which will be at the index of three. And I'm just going to format that. I like doing it like this because it's easier to read, but of course you can leave it all on one line if you like it better. And the compiler is not happy because I absolutely forgot to write array in these two. But once you have that, you can go ahead and print the caller. So you know what that is. It's going to be nice to find out. And you can print that the caller loaded. So you can actually debug and understand that it happened. And we need to return the caller so that we can assign it in our application. Next, let's go ahead and create some UI so we can actually use that struct and those functions. So the first thing we have to create is at state private var caller of type caller, which will be set initially to black. And then we need to go type in private var caller 
data is going to equal caller data. And inside here, we're going to type in VStack with a spacing of 10. And we need to provide a caller picker, which is going to say, pick a caller. And we need to bind that as a selection to the caller. Next, we want to create a rectangle that we can actually show the caller on with a frame and a height of 200. And the foreground caller is going to be set to the caller, while the corner radius is going to be set to 20. And it's going to have a bit of padding. Next, we want to go ahead and create a button that can save the data. So here we're going to type in save caller. And we're going to get caller data dot save caller and the caller is just going to be the caller you want to save. This can be any caller. You can even go ahead and type in caller dot red if you want to save red. But since we have a variable that changes, we're just going to insert that to get the most recent data. And we're going to add a spacer so all of the views get pushed towards the top of the screen. Next, we're going to add some padding and we also want to add an on appear. So here we type in on appear and we're going to perform loading the data. And inside here, go ahead and assign to your local color variable the value that you load from color data. So color data load color, which I remind you is going to return a color that we have in our database. And that's all it takes to remember a color because we did all the functionality we need inside here to save the color. And this is all we need to use to load the color. So we can actually go ahead and run this application as it is. So go ahead and hold Command plus R and wait for it to build. So you're going to notice we have a black rectangle here. And as soon as we change the caller to something such as light blue and close this, we can go ahead and click on Save Caller. And it's going to say Caller Saved. And as I mentioned earlier, it's going to return to us a component array. So as you can see here, this is RGB, which means it's 35% red, 76% green, and 96% blue, plus the opacity set at one. So that's the array that we get returned to us in the components, just to make it a bit more clear. And once the caller is saved, of course, you can go ahead and close this application, and then you can wait a few seconds, and as soon as you open it, you're going to get the caller from last time. Now we can go ahead and save a different caller, such as red, and close it. Click on Save Caller, and since we rerun the application, it's not going to show in the logs, but if we actually rerun the application, it's going to say data has been loaded and it's going to load to us the red caller. As you can see right here, the caller was loaded and it also printed the caller that we got back as a hex value. So as you can see, we successfully saved the caller in a database and we successfully retrieved it. But that's actually all I wanted to go over in today's video. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.